Hello, I'm Kevin Church, and this month for June 2021, we have Brett Weller as our Songwriter of the Month. How you doing? Good to meet you. Good to meet you, Brett. <laughs> so, we always ask our folks uh, to come on the show, their influences. So, let's just start with, did you come from a musical family? Yes. Yeah, I sure did. My dad um, was a musician. He toured you know when he was a bit younger he toured a little bit and then kind of growing up he uh, had a few different projects he played around town in new orleans and then he actually had a a long time where he worked on children's music so that's kind of (laughs) what me and my sister remember uh of him is him bringing us into the to the studio and uh us singing singing choruses and stuff on on children's songs and really? stuff. So. I mean that's that how <laughs> old were you? I mean young. Uh man, maybe like seven, eight. And I getting know, exposed to nine. studio time and mm-hmm. exp- the studio in general, people are still scared of that, you know. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I I would say my, my sister got a little bit more time than I did, you know, but I'm I'm not salty, you know. But <laughs> But uh, no, we had a gr- yeah. It was it was a good time. It was really a lot of fun, and um, <clears throat> and so yeah. So growing up, he he's kind of our I, I guess our our patriarch of, of music in the house. He's a music teacher. Uh, always taught, you know, in elementary element elementary age uh, classes, and and so we kind of have all picked up on it in our own way. My sister, she she sings. Uh, so my brother, he plays bass and, and plays at his uh, church back home in New Orleans. And then uh, and then there's there's me. So Wow, okay. So, it's, so everybody's playing. It's not like somebody got the music gene and the other people didn't. Yeah, some of us got more athletic genes than I did. But, uh, but, but as far as music, uh, we, we, we all have our own kind of expression of it. Oh, that's awesome, yeah. man. Okay, so you were exposed that young. So basically, when you came out of the womb, you were surrounded by music. Yeah, I don't know. Nece- I think I don't know necessarily. My dad was at a gig when I was born. I think he was watching a Saints game when I was born. But <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell the two. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, there I was pretty much always um, my. Let's see, my first song that I got a tip for. I was five years old. And he brought me on stage, and I sang with him, and I sang uh, Low Places by Garth Brooks. And it was just a total crowd pleaser, you know. And this, this man came up after, at the end, and he's like, I just want to give you a dollar. And, uh, and <laughs> yeah, I don't have that dollar. I kind of think about it. I was like, man, it'd be cool to, like, have that framed or whatever. But, yeah. But, that, you know, that dollar disappeared. I think it got spent <laughs> on a toy or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But you're going to be playing a different song for us today, right? Yeah, so today I'll play my, um, I guess, the, the first single that I've released since I've moved to to Charleston. Um, and that's uh, Carolina Sun. And that's that has a, a much simpler story. Having more time with my daughter, um, having more time with my wife, you know, having our boy in the way, you know. Yeah, I think I was just so busy, you know, and I just had so much going on. And um, it just, you know, life kind of hit the brakes, and I was able to just spend so much time with her. And and so that's why I wrote Caroline's Son, because I was just like, I don't, like right now, you know, we were expecting to be out be out on the beach, which we ended up doing a lot of. But we, we expect to be out on the beach, we expect to enjoy the, the sunshine, and I was like, man, I have all the, the sunshine I need right here in this living room, you know, I'm finding so much, um, you know, my daughter has bright blonde hair, which we're both brunettes and so we have no idea where she gets that from um but i've always called her my sunshine i was like man she is uh she is my my carolina son you know and so so i wrote that song and um and that's why i'll play for you today oh that's really cool (laughs) well we have karen egan with us and she's gonna join us that's gonna yeah it sounds beautiful i'm glad to have you brett absolutely awesome brett weller everybody Highways 
seventeen, she is young, like a golden sunrise, and I can feel her warm with me now in the breaking tide, and I believe there is a love. Found beyond our sightlines, and Highway 17, feeling young with my Carolina sun. And born on lively streets, where the music always. Keeps us dancing, there's rhythm in her feet. She always finds a way to shine. I moved us out of town to lose a job. I just got started. I feel I run aground, but I have all I need. And I'm on Highway 17. She is young, like a golden sunrise, and I can feel her warm with me now in the breaking tide. And I believe there is a love found beyond our sightline. Highway 17, feeling young with my Carolina. I'm on Highway 17. She is young, like a golden sunrise, and I can feel her warm with me now in the breaking tide. Who's your um, influences then other than your dad? Like, what did you start gravitating to in your own, unlike in, uh, when you started listening to music outside of the Yeah, family? so my, so a huge influence in my life was my, was my papa, was my mom's dad. He mm -hmm. was, um, I just, I, I really, he inspired me, you know, I just really aspired to be. Uh, like him and and just really enjoyed time around him and uh he was he was in the film industry so he sold um <clears throat> he had his own small kind of film distribution company and would play he also worked many years with warner brothers uh between new orleans and and boston but every time i went to his house a staple he would always have big band on the record player you know anything dean martin frank sinatra um, Sammy Davis Jr. is just always on uh, at all times. It's, uh, I could he could have been in the Rat Pack. I mean, that's just how he lived his, his <laughs> that's life. That's cool. And um, so that was that was huge for me. Um, just kind of really getting exposed into that music. And uh, and so besides that, um, that was, that was kind of really my my most exposure growing up. You know my. My mom really, you know, my, my parents divorced when I was young. And so my mom um, really got heavily involved in church and really, uh, so I also grew up with a lot of, uh, a lot of the, the 90s uh, contemporary Christian music okay. uh, playing on the house. So I would say between my dad's, you know, 60s rock and 70s funk and my papa's big band and then my mom's, you know, 90s 
Christian music. Um, that's it. Let's just say it was very hard for me to nail down a genre when I first started writing music. You know, it's like because the things yeah. just kind of really just jumbled up in my uh, my creative creative head. You know, <laughs> I hear you, man. I understand. So, when do you think you wrote your first first song? So I wrote my first song in high school is when I uh, first started writing. I I actually, I wouldn't say I step, stepped away from music, but I, I really didn't get personally involved in music until, until high school. You know, until junior high, I started taking piano lessons. Mm-hmm. Um, and because I didn't want to play guitar, it was just kind of my own... Uh, you know, at the time, just my own way of processing right. divorce and, and life and, and um, just kind of everything that, that that brought to to my life, you know, living with my mom. She moved us to, to Mississippi and, um, you know, out in the country. We lived in this, like, 100-year-old, it used to be this camping house. It had no insulation. It had nothing. Just the, she was just trying to, like, keep us out of the projects. And, uh, wow. And... So, so I grew up there with her for the most part and would visit, you know, visit my dad in New Orleans. So my own way of kind of doing it, I was, I was like, you know, I'm just going to do my own thing. You know, I'm not going to, I kind of abandoned music. I tried guitar once. I was like, yeah, forget this. I'm not playing this ever again. And, um, but something about, uh, really the, the church and, and church music and just people, coming together in one room and, and having a, a one direction and, and just expression, um, with these songs really, really inspired me. I was like, you know, there really is something bigger to music than just my own kind of bitterness towards it, I guess, with my, my life journey, you know? So I was like, well, there, there, there really is something so powerful Right, you know about music, and so I was like, you know, maybe I should discover this in my own way. And so I started piano lessons because it was, um, and I, I did that for a few years. My instructor left; he just like ghosted one lesson, and so then I was like, well, okay, I'm really not that good at piano. But the the church youth group, uh, the the youth leader, he he, you know. Let me come play. He was like, man, just come play. You just play some simple chords. He was the first one to show me what a chord chart looked like, you know. Oh, cool. And um, he's like, just, you know, just keep it simple. You know, just play along. And so I started started playing there, and it just really opened, you know, opened, opened up my eyes to just my own expression with music. And so, funny enough, I started on piano, but when I started to write, you know, I realized... Um, I actually, you know, he taught me, the, the, the youth leader, you know, worship leader taught me uh, how to play guitar. I picked it up really quick, and I was like, you know, I actually really enjoy this. And <laughs> so awesome. I started, I kept playing guitar, and um, and then, yeah, it was in, in high school that I realized my first, first song I ever wrote was called Tomorrow Will Be Better. And, mm. uh, and I... I still have the lyrics to that song and I, I look at it from every now and then because it's just, it's like, that literally was my, was just my, my, my hope, you know, my longing in my life at that time. And it's just, it was awesome, you know, connect with songwriting in that way. And it was the first time that I was able to truly be able to express myself in a, in a deep way because I'm a, pretty introverted guy I really at the time I didn't really didn't have any friends I was trying to figure out the new high school that I was at I was trying to really make sense of a lot of a lot of things in the the world around me and so I was really I was really by myself and and that's when I I, I realized that songwriting was the best and most just one of the just an amazing gift of God of just healing um, in my life to, to look forward to the future, you know, and to know that 
where I'm at now, it, it doesn't have to stay that way. Like there is hope. And I started finding that hope and started writing about that hope. And it was amazing because all these early songs that I wrote, you know, I wrote a song called Better Days or, you know, Tomorrow Will Be Better. Um, <clears throat> uh, it, it, it's, it's songs I was just, you see me trying to, you know, make sense of something that I didn't actually have at the time, you know? Right, right. So. But something you were aspiring for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's really cool. So when you read these lyrics back to yourself now, um, you said your father too, right? Is that what you said mm -hmm. earlier? You don't know you're a, you're married. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm married. I got two little, two little kids. Okay. <laughs> okay. So things are totally different now, aren't they? Like as far as yeah. what you were seeing when you were in high school. Yeah. So everything you aspired for, you're pretty much projecting now it's like everything's just happening for you um so that was really 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 cool to hear about your songwriting journey and what i want to know now is with what you've learned where where are you now with your songwriting like what what are you feeling like you need to write today yeah you you read about what you felt then that you needed to bring yourself out of mm -hmm. so now what are you what are you writing today for yeah so i think it kind of went through a few different phases in my songwriting journey and it's, it's and to simplify as much as possible it's like when i first started it was completely inward it was completely about just self-soothing and trying to trying to uh <clears throat> you know uh kind of really dive inward and then there's you know Obviously, there was a moment where I realized that my songs weren't, um, you know, they were so personal that in a lot of sense, they weren't very relatable. And so then I went into this whole thing where I felt I was like, well, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to write songs that are just, you know, other people can play, anybody can sing, anybody can pick up, and they just don't even have to do with me, you know. And so I tried to go that route, mm -hmm. but it wasn't natural. It just felt, it felt uncomfortable, you know. It just wasn't, there's, there are writers that are just incredibly gifted at that, you know. Right. They are just so gifted, and, um, and so I was trying to do that. And so I would say where I've, I, you know, very long story short and, and, and journey is, you know, where I'm at now is, is, is taking songs that are that are personal and writing that is that has a has a glimpse of me in it but but in my best way I guess attempting to repackage where it is it is a little bit more broad and it is relatable and it is something that people can be uh, encouraged by and be challenged by and be lifted by um, by seeing kind of a glimpse of my journey in it but also seeing a whole lot of things that speaks to their journey, you know, and speaks to them. And so that's what I'm attempting, you know. <laughs> right. I wrote, uh, you know, my last release, Marathon. That's that's pretty much, you know, I, I say that Marathon is the most personal song that I've ever written. <clears throat> but then I feel like, the but it's amazing to, you know, to compare that to you know, tomorrow will be better. Um, I feel like it's very relatable. I feel like when someone listens to it, you know, it's about, uh, you know, letting go of the past and not letting it hold you back about not letting it dictate your future. It's about, you know, um, <clears throat> really seeing, uh, that just how powerful forgiveness is, how powerful, mm. um, you know, how powerful just, really uh you know kind of trusting the journey in life you know that it's that you live life a day at a time like it's okay that things aren't just you know fixed like that instantly you know like that's okay that doesn't mean that you're you know just your life is destroyed like you're you're gonna make it like it it takes a pace you know and you find that pace and you do it a day at a time so i feel like the song is extremely relatable but it comes from such a personal uh, a personal foundation you know? right and so that's where i'm that's where i'm at now <laughs> very cool so what um it's a marathon 
but you're going to be playing a different song for us today, right? Yeah, so today I'll play my, um, I guess, the, the first single that I've released since I've moved to to Charleston. Um, and that's uh, Carolina Sun. And that's that has a, a much simpler story, I guess. That's pretty much, I, uh, you know, we, yeah, I, I'm born and raised not any further than an hour from New Orleans, you know, right. for my entire life. You know, the furthest I ever got was, uh, you know, was two hours for college in, in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And mm-hmm. so we, so when we, we, my wife and I, you know, really made this jump and we had our little girl, our, our boy hadn't been born yet. He's our, our son was born last year during the pandemic, during the quarantine and, and, and yeah. things, but we, yeah, we moved with so much um, joy and, and excitement and, and hope that we're just, you know, we're trying something new as a, as a couple, you know, we're not, this mm. is a, a new place that we're wanting to go move to and live and, um, and we're going to have, be close to the beach and have our kids uh, be able to enjoy, you know, being right next to the beach and, and things that we haven't, you know, we didn't necessarily grow up around, but we right. were just really pumped. And so we were all, we were all in, we were excited. We came, um, I had received a, a, you know, a transfer opportunity with the company I was working for to kind of help us get over here. And so we moved in in January, 2020. And then at the end of March, 2020, everything shut down, you know, and, um, we had, our boy was born that June. Mm. And so we're like, wow, we're like three months out from having a second kid. We're in this completely, uh, you know, the small apartment that we, you know, deliberately chose to keep it small to be cheap because we were like, you know, we figured we'd be there for about eight months, you know, in the fall we'll, we'll go out and, and house hunt, buy yeah. a house and, right. uh, right. and it's going to be awesome. So we had this whole plan and obviously like, I mean, millions and millions of Americans, I mean, everybody, um, it, you know, the plan for 2020 didn't go anything at all. So March just shut down and, uh, we were, you know, like everyone else, we were, you know, quarantined and trying to, trying to be mindful of everything, trying to understand what is, what is pandemic? What is, co- what is, what is going on? And, uh, trying to understand what, what news is real and what's fake and what, you know, whatever oh, not. Oh, so yeah. we're trying to navigate all that just yeah, like everyone. There's a lot going on. And, um, and so there's that really that sense of just okay, like what you know, what are we gonna do? And we're we're here, and and so far we, from what we could see, we were like we like it here, we're enjoying it, but we have no idea what this is what's gonna happen. And so, um, you know, we made it through. We had our our son was born, and uh, so we we had our two kids, and and pretty much my my wife looked at me one day and she was like. You know, despite everything, uh, you know, my wife, we, we, such a, such a, a, a team unit, you know, and I, so the thing is what she told me, I thought about her, but obviously at that moment she was felt it was, you know, I was encouraging her, but the whole time she had been encouraging me. So that's awesome. But anyway, she, she looked at me, she was like, you know, you've, you have had so much um, just kind of happiness during this time, which I, you know, and, and have really taken this in strides. Like we were, and we were just kind of reflecting. We we're just like, yeah, we could have literally let this tear us apart. I mean, I literally uprooted my family. We moved to a whole other side of the country and then just, yeah, you know, not going to be able to buy a house. I'm be able to do anything. And I said, you know, and, um, I said, well, you know, it's really, it, it, you know, I can't take back the time that I have with our family, you know, during this time, like I absolutely cannot. And I was just finding so much joy and, you know, having, having more time with my daughter, um, having more time with my wife, you know, having our boy in the way, you know, before we moved here, my daughter, you know, was all was totally a mama's girl, you know, it's like, everybody's like, oh, I bet she's a mama's boy, uh, you know, a daddy's girl, and it's like, no, she's not, you know, but, um, yeah, I think I was just so busy, you know, and I just had so much going on, and, um, it just, you know, life kind of hit the brakes, and I was able to just spend so much time with her, and, and so that's why I wrote Carolina's Son, because I was just like, I don't, 
like right now, you know, we were expecting to be out, be out on the beach, which we ended up doing a lot of. But we we expect to be on the beach. We expect to enjoy the the sunshine. I was like, man, I have all the the sunshine I need right here in this living room. You know, I'm finding so much. Um, you know, my daughter has bright blonde hair, which we're both brunettes, and so we have no <laughs> idea where she gets that from. Um, but I've always called her my sunshine. I was like, man, she is. Uh, she is my my Carolina son, you know, and so so I wrote that song, and um, and that's why I play for you today. Oh, that's really <laughs> cool. Well, we have Karen Egan with us, and she's going to join us. That's going, yeah, it sounds beautiful. I'm glad to have you, Brett. Absolutely, awesome. Good Brett time. Weller, everybody. Music sets you free. <laughs> 